Hey friends, Ben here from Lean Strong. Today we're going to talk about getting enough water. Um, and it's something that is funny because everybody knows we need to drink more water or most people need to drink more water. And oftentimes when new members start with us, one of the things they say is I got to increase my water intake. So today we want to talk a little bit about how to get more water into your daily life because it's not a problem of believing it's the right thing to do. It's how do we actually make this work? So first of all, the question that we often get is how much water should I be drinking? Because if you Google it, like I did this morning, so I'm like, I wonder what's out there across the map. There is completely different recommendations depending where you look. So the baseline that we like to work with here is whatever your body weight is in pounds divided by two is the number of ounces of water you should drink in a day. And if you want to turn those ounces into liters, multiply it by 0.03. So I'm 180 pounds, divide that by two is 90 ounces, which is just under three liters of water a day. It's 2.7. The catch is that's my minimum. If I'm out for a hike or it's a hotter summer day or I'm doing more activities or I'm at the gym, I definitely should be getting above that 2.7 liter mark, probably closer to like four, depending on the day, even like four and a half. So it's something where oftentimes we start our day with coffee, like I did today, I've got my coffee, but then I conveniently forget that I haven't got enough water to start. So now that you know how much water to drink, again, take your body weight, divide it by two, and that's the number of ounces, and then multiply it by 0 0.03 to get the number of liters, because we live in Canada, y'all. Um, let's talk a little bit about the benefits. So first of all, we know we need to drink enough water. Our body's like 70% water, is part of what we're made of. We've got to um, replace that as we sweat and pee and all that stuff. But one of the biggest things when it comes to drinking more water is like brain fog and mental performance. So what I've heard is if you've already started to feel thirsty, you're st obviously starting to be a little bit dehydrated and physical and mental performance will drop up to 20% just once you know you're thirsty. So if you're someone who, you know, I know we're not training anyone to go to the Olympics here, but if you're someone who is a high achiever at work or you need to manage your time a little bit better or you feel like you've got a lot of things that need to get done in a day, having a 20% decrease in mental performance and having some brain fog, that's gonna slow you down. It's gonna make your day a lot harder. So it's really important to make sure you're always drinking water throughout the day so that you're not having that decrease in performance, which is leading to, honestly, everything being harder. Um, two other important things are Dehydration can actually cause your body to retain water. So we see this a lot when people are starting a fat loss journey with us where they're not drinking enough water and they feel like they're not losing any weight, like the scale isn't changing even though the measurements are. If you're not drinking enough water, it signals to your body, hey, we're not getting enough water, there must be a shortage, we're gonna hold on to all the water we have and that can lead to a little bit of like bloat or like puffiness or softness. Um, it, can, it can really in frustratingly impact how you feel about your fat loss results. Um, and last but not least is the way we're wired, we often confuse hunger with thirst. So if you're feeling like you need a snack or you're not sure if you're hungry or not, but you maybe think you're hungry, more often than not, what I've experienced is we're actually thirsty because we haven't been drinking enough water. So that's a really huge cue to help reduce calories and reduce you know, excess snacking is drinking more water is going to help reduce that, especially combined with the extra protein we were talking about last month. So in terms of increasing water, there's really two strategies that I find work the best for people. The first one is building habits around water intake. So for instance, that could be like, before I finish my morning coffee, I need to finish a bottle of water. Another strategy could be when I wake up in the morning, I have a glass of water on my bedside table and I chug it before I get dressed. Um, you can, you've seen people with water bottles with like times on them as well, like this much 10 a.m. Should, you should be here, noon you should be here. Same type of idea if they're just trying to make it top of mind. Um, being someone who's been in the fitness industry for years, I rarely leave the house without a water bottle. Honestly, even if it's just like to go to the store. I actually quite literally had to go buy a piece of drywall yesterday and my water bottle came with me in the car. So the first strategy is just setting habits around getting more water, setting some guidelines in place for yourself. Um, maybe it has to be a liter of water by noon or a bit of water before your coffee or you drink water before bed. 
but figuring out what are those strategies that'll help you improve towards your minimum once you've of course done the math on what you need to hit. The second strategy is around substituting other drinks, specifically alcohol, um, for water. This time of year, it's really easy to be like, hey, let's go grab a drink, let's do this, let's do that. And almost all of it involves alcohol, as I'm also experiencing. And one of my go-to strategies for getting more water is if alcohol is something that's part of your regular day or your regular week, is simply swapping water for alcohol or adding a glass of water between every glass of booze, which is also going to make your head feel a lot better the next day. But the same applies for everything else. If you're drinking too much coffee in a day, you can have a glass of water instead of that third coffee. If you're drinking like pop or soda or juice, swap a glass of water or interrupt the glass of water with like pop, water, alcohol, water, that type of thing. And you'd be amazed how much um, extra water you get from that. Now, the downside to all of this is as you start to increase your water intake, you're going to need to pee a lot. That's totally okay. It is not forever. In the same way that your body will adapt to getting a lower water intake and it will hold on to water, like we talked about a few minutes ago, your body will also adapt to getting more water intake and not hold on to that. And your body will get used to not having to pee so much. If you're going from like a liter or two of water a day to two or three liters of water a day, it is kind of, in a good way, a shock to the system. Your body's not ready for that. It hasn't adapted to that yet. So you're gonna need to pee a lot, um, but do not fret. Once you get your water intake up for a couple weeks, everything will kind of balance out. So don't let that be the obstacle stopping you. So I hope that gives you a little bit of information about water intake. I'll be talking a little bit more about habits and strategies you can use over the next couple weeks. But for now, use that math, body weight in pounds, divided by two times 0.03 to figure out how many liters of water you need to be hitting as a minimum. And I'd definitely be increasing it now that it's summer. Talk soon.